on this video I'm gonna share some of the general information when it comes to uh, the water cooling system between the 2014 and 2016 uh, touring bikes right now I have a 2015 ultra limited low around 8500 miles I started having problems with my water cooling system my engine light will come on and my cooling light will come on I started doing some research on YouTube to find any type of information related to the problem but I noticed I was having a hard time finding uh, problems you know information related to the problem with the, the 2014 to 2016 water cooling system so I realized that it would be a, a good idea to uh, share some of the information that I found, general information that I found when it comes to troubleshooting uh, the cooling system on the touring bikes. And I would like to share this information that it may help you to troubleshoot your problem for your uh, 2014 to 2016 touring bike cooling system. Okay, first I'm going to start with uh, showing you a uh, uh, schematic uh, for this harness that it probably will help you troubleshooting uh, the cooling system. If you can see figure number one, which is your right uh, uh, fan connector, then you have number two, your left fan connector, then you have figure number three, which is your uh, ECT sensor for your cooling system. Then you have uh, figure number four, which is your connector that will connect your uh, cooling pump. Then you're going to have figure number eight and number five, which is quick disconnect. If you see uh, figure number eight and number five, they call them the cooling jumpers. Uh, that's, those two connectors are going to help you to troubleshoot the system without going directly to the, uh, to the fan connectors. Also, you'll be able to uh, check your ECT sensor, check for internal uh, resistance to see if your sensor is good or bad. Able to check resistance, internal resistance to your pump, also to your fans, you know, internal. Also, you know, check the harness, make sure there's no shortage on the harness. Now I'm going to show you the schematic for the cooling system. At the top, you got your fuse block where you can see your cooling fuse and your cooling relay your cooling pump you see your right cooling fan your ECT sensor left cooling fan and you're gonna see uh, I think it's called connector 232LA that is the disconnect right on the bottom right by the pump that's where you could do quick access to troubleshoot you know through those connectors I hope with this schematic it will help you to a uh, better understanding of the system and help you uh, to troubleshoot the uh, cooling system. You see on the cooling relay, you have your relay that powers three things, your cooling pump, your left and right cooling fans. You see your ECT sensor, but that is powered by your ECM computer. Okay, on this picture I'm going to show you your fuse box that is in your left hand side of your bike. You can see your cooling fuse that powers your water pump, left hand side, right hand side, cooling fans, which is a 10 amp fuse. Then you're going to see your, uh, your relay, which is the one half from the fuse box. During the troubleshooting, I checked the relay, make sure the relay was good. And yes, the relay was good. And during uh, the rest of the troubleshooting, uh, one of the main problem was I was getting my fuse was getting was blowing in, in a minute. You know, it will work for uh, 200 miles, no problem, and it will blow the fuse back and forth. It did it so many times that you know I realized is is an intermittent problem. Uh, obviously that's after troubleshooting everything you know uh, making sure the harness was good making sure the fans isolating the fans uh, making sure the the sensor was good and pretty much everything was narrowing down into the water pump the water pump was giving me 
in the meaning problem the water pump was the one that it was blowing the fuse so internally it was shorting out in this next video i'm going to show you how to turn your left and right fan and your water pump on without your motorcycle running it's a quick check to make sure if your fans and your pumps are running properly and also uh, is the same method how to bleed the air out of the cooling system if at one point you have to drain the system and this is how the manual tells you to do it uh, manually without using other type of tools that which that will be a second option the way to turn the fan and the pump on to bleed the system the way the manual tells you is you turn your ignition on not the engine just ignition on after you turn your you turn your ignition on the manual says you pull the throttle minimum 50 percent for uh three seconds that should kick your fans and your pump on so you're gonna see here as I hold it I don't know if you hear you hear the fan but also you're gonna hear if you touch if you touch the pump with your hands you're gonna feel the pump running too so after you have the pump running you know you got this kicked in running you take the cap off right here you, see. you take the cap off and you start servicing with Harley Davidson cooling little by little until you start seeing little bubbles the reason that I I had to bleed the system is because uh, one of the first thing when I started troubleshooting I ended up replacing the the sensor uh, thinking that it, the sensor uh, was bad so I decided to change the sensor I figured it was the cheapest thing and you know, I think I paid around twenty five dollars for the sensor so I ended up replacing the sensor so that made me uh, bleed the system you know and that's how I ended up bleeding the system during the whole troubleshooting bleeding the system manually there's another method but you need a special thing is a special palm tool that you gotta have this is the manual method to do it you know yourself and once you're done you put the cap on and to turn off the fans and the pump just turn the ignition to off and that's it put this thing back in there oh also make sure when you bleed in the system this is all your reservoir cap is out you know you put that thing back in there on this picture um, I'm showing you your location where your ECT sensor goes which is in your left hand side it goes right on your uh, left uh, radiator and that's where your sensor is on this next video I'm gonna show you um, the location of your thermostat the water pump and your junction connector which is uh, number 232 also I'm gonna show you some of the bad design of our uh, on my opinion I would say more like a flaws I think the Harley Davidson could have done better when uh, rewriting water hoses and and location of the connectors which on 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 later video are gonna show uh, a fix that I did to uh, isolate the uh, the water hose that wraps around the uh, water pump with a, uh, a heat shield just to uh, minimize heat you know going around the pump and uh, you know letting the pump get less heat than what is creating between the actual pump and the actual hose you know water hose that is wrapping around the pump which i think is is a bad design uh it's a lot of heat going through there and i think that that probably will shorten the life of the pump because of too much heat 
concentrate on that area. Okay, we're in the bottom of the engine, right by the pump. Okay, uh, first, you got your pump right here. Then you have your thermostat right here. Right on the bottom right here, you have two connectors. This connector, let me see. This connector is gonna be for your right uh, radiator fan. This connector is, it holds four, four wires. This is like a junction connector. That connector goes to, for your left fan and your uh, sensor. Uh, one way that I made a lot easier for me to check resistance on the sensor, I I went through here because it goes to my sensor. It's a lot easier because uh, trying to get uh, some uh, uh, meter lead to hook up to your sensor pins is very um, it's very tight, especially when your sensor is still hooked up to your left radiator. So it's very easy access through here. You disconnect here, and the harness goes straight to your harness sensor. And I use here, I use this point to uh, to measure the resistance. Uh, one thing that I noticed, obviously, the uh, um, these two connectors are right on the bottom. You know, it's very exposed to debris. And especially when you do your oil change, your filter change, you you, you may get some uh, leftover oil dripping through there. So as a extra precaution, you know, extra thing that I, I did apply some uh, dielectric grease, you know, to protect anti-corrosive that they call it dielectric grease uh, on the connectors. I put some on the on the front and some on the back, you know, just to, just a little, just just to give some extra protection. Here's your hose from the water, and it wraps around right on the pump, right on the pump. It wraps around, and I think that's a very bad design. You know, it's, it's a lot of heat concentrating around there, and I don't think it's good for the pump. This is the heat shield that I use for uh, to wrap around the hose. I got it from Home Depot. Uh, it's rated to a uh, 2500 um, Fahrenheit. I think I pay about around $14. And here's the video to show how I wrapped around around the hose and with using some uh, tie wraps around. I'm hoping that this will minimize the heat concentration around the pump and help the pump uh you know the the life of the of the palm you know to expand it a little more with uh installing this heat shield so far from what i read on on, on the internet uh people are changing these pumps between nine thousand to fifteen thousand miles they're changing this pump which which i don't understand you know it shouldn't be failing that soon Okay, in conclusion of my troubleshooting, I ended up finding out that, that I have a I had a faulty pump. Uh, it was shutting out uh, in the morning. I uh, ended up calling Harley Davidson, even though my warranty had expired. So I called Harley Davidson, the Harley Davidson, and complained about it. And Harley Davidson did a what they call a goodwill, and ended up uh, uh, replacing my pump for free. Uh, with free of charge so that's something good about Harley Davidson I guess they stand back their their product so as a goodwill they changed my pump for free and I didn't pay a penny out of it I hope that this uh, video can help you to troubleshoot your problem with uh, your 2014 to 2016 uh, touring uh, bike uh, cooling system and remember uh, this is just a reference only uh, uh, use your uh, service manual to troubleshoot but I hope this uh, can help you to guide you to find the problem with your water system water cleaning system mm -hmm.